All right, so let's have a look into the video menu of this app by simply clicking on the arrow down there. And you simply click on video to get there. So once we are in video mode, oh, you have different options for the frame rates and the video quality. So in the States, you would pick the top one, 30 frames and 80p, and in Europe, 25 frames per second and 1080p. But you have also different options to choose from down here. The further you go down, the weaker the quality will be. And then on the left side, you have the different grids. And that is just as a reference to frame up your shots. So I like to use this one. Cool, then let's have a look what else is here. On the top, you have a camera icon which tells you that you're in video mode. Then you see the 25 frames per second that we just looked at and that you're filming in 1080p. This is interesting and a little bit tricky. If you're flipping the camera, and let's do that right now, then you see it switches to 720p, which is lower res. That's because of the camera that is slightly weaker than the other one. But once you flip back, it stays at 720p. So you have to go back and increase the quality again. And this is a little bit sad that it's not automatic, but hey, if you know about it, then that's fine too. The next icon is light and you can turn it on down here and select either auto, which I wouldn't do, or on, which is the torch here. Then it goes on and you have a light that's on. And the screen is pretty dark right now, so you can see all the numbers. We will make it brighter in a second. And the next icon is a auto mode and a camera, which means the camera is running in auto mode and we will change that in a second. But let's move on. This next one is the SD card or a symbol for how much space is left on your phone. In this case, it's pretty empty so, so or full. There's not much space left, so that's bad. Uh, and the next one is the battery, which is full and that's fine. Cool, and then the other options here, the plus and the minus, you can zoom in and zoom out which I never use, but it's good to know that it's there. If you have zoomed in, you can click on the one X and it zooms out automatically. And you also have the zoom speed control, which I don't need, I'm not using it. Then the basic is hit record on the red button, it starts recording, but you also have the option to hit pause. It just pauses the recording and you can continue recording after that want to stop the recording just hit stop and if you want to take a photo click on the camera icon cool then let's have a look at the neat deeper menu which is by clicking on the M and now let's have a look at the different options here the first one is white balance on the top and once it's yellow it says that it's on autopilot basically but if you click and yeah, click on it, it becomes white, which means you have the control and you can go from 10,000 Kelvin to 200 Kelvin. And we are going back to auto by clicking on the icon. The autofocus, same thing. If you click and hold on it, it becomes selectable and manual and go from one to zero, going back to auto by clicking on it. And then you have the AI, which stands for automatic exposure. And you can make it brighter up until plus eight or darker minus eight. Let's go back to zero. And that affects the ISO and the shutter if you want to change the shutter you can go from oh, 25 to 
1325. Let's go back. And if we want to change the ISO, it goes from 800 to 50. That's the front end of the menu, but if you look to the back end, you can find it by clicking on the set button and then go to video. And you can basically stamp every video with a date, which we don't want. You can choose in which order the date is formatted, not important either. Um, although I kind of like year, month, day, then the order of the videos is quite nice. You can add a location stamp, which is nice if you're doing like location scout, but it's not really needed, just leave it off. Copyright stamp, not important. The stamp font size, the color, I never use any of it. The audio meter, that is quite nice. You can turn it on and off, go back. Now you see the green bar here, that's the audio meter. You see the audio levels which we haven't talked about. So if it's in the green range and peaking a little bit into the yellow one, then it's good. And if you're hitting like red, then it's definitely too loud. So you can turn it back off and then it will be gone. Then you can add frame guidelines, one, one, four by three, 185. I don't know this one, two, two, 235, 40, 45, or off. I'll have it off. You can choose to have the image stabilized on or off. If it's on, then you're losing a little bit of quality because the iPhone needs some more footage on the edge to kind of render the stabilization. So if you have a tripod, turn it off. If you're walking around, then try to turn it on and see how it works for you. You can set a video timer, let's say that you have a phone on the tripod and you need to walk in front of the camera, let's say 10 seconds, go back out and once you hit record it counts down. Now you have the time to walk away from the tripod, position yourself and then start recording. Oh and that's another important function here. While you are recording, you can see the time that you are recording. You see how much space your phone has. In this case, it's 29 gigabytes. And out of that 29 gigabytes, I have 1.2 gigabytes free space, which is not a lot. So I should better free up some space on this phone. The nice thing about this app, everything is recorded into the iPhone normal video and photo library so you can access it through image capture, if you know what I'm talking about. And now it's your turn to try it out. Let me know if everything is working out for you and see you in the next video. Goodbye.